Hey guys, and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included, Clay's Amazing Space Colony Simulator Extraordinaire. My name is Twitchy, and we are on the LV426, a collection of asteroids floating out in the voids where we have been trying to take 11 duplicates into the future. And to that end, you might remember that last time we actually managed to start running out of food over here. We'd run out of dirt, all the polluted up water systems had fallen apart, and we just needed to try and get some better food on the go. And to that end, I have built a bristle blossom farm here. I've gone and uh, wrangled up a whole bunch of grub grubs here to give these guys their 50% growth bonus. Of course, the one that I click on doesn't have it. Grub rub 50% growth bonus. That's wonderful. And where I couldn't do that, I just moved in some sweetles. I'm in the middle of changing the top floor as well. But... Whilst doing that, we had a bit of a problem brewing. It was a problem turning over in the background that I hadn't quite realised was a thing. And down here, this bottom carbon skimmer had not had its power hooked up. Uh, this is a problem that may, uh, you know, affect one or two people every now and uh, then. Uh, but that's not that much of a problem. We connect the uh, the carbon skimmers together and then everything should work out okay, right? It's not quite as simple as that. What we've got, the problem that we've got is we're feeding in enough polluted water here that our liquid reservoir is actually having trouble cleaning the germs in time there is a whole bunch of chlorine down here that spends most of its time just trying to make sure that this less liquid reservoir has zero germs in it if we have a look at the water inside you can see it's surrounded by chlorine dying 100 percent per cycle but this water sieve here just keeps on feeding more stuff in down below now there are two ways that we can fix this oh, and of course all of this has uh, slime lung in it that's the problem that we've got there are two ways of fixing this number one Let's, let's cure this uh, place of slime lung. That shouldn't be too much of a, a problem. We can either cook it or freeze it. I think freezing it is actually the preferred method. Slime lung, temperature range, uh, 10 to 100. Okay, I don't I don't think we're going to let it go over 100. I've got a feeling quite a few of our things here would melt in that situation. Or maybe not. Overheat temperature 75. Okay, yeah, we do have a few things that would overheat. As well as clearing the slime lung, another thing we could do is increase the number of liquid reservoir we have. Obviously, uh, in this situation, uh, the germs are only being exposed once to chlorine and then cycling around and being exposed to chlorine again. And it's, you know, it's got quite a fair cleaning power, but if we had another liquid reservoir, say right here, we'd be able to be killing twice as many germs at once. The problem is we've got this hydrogen generator here. I've not seen this tick over for a while so I think I might try and move it up the top and rearrange this area out Let, let's do that I think we're gonna start by placing some drywall up here it's time to take over this area here see if we can't get some more building space can we have another one of these we do not have any uh, glass that's a shame it would have been nice to put a glass dome over the top of this but that that's fine that's no a big issue oh look the gas pump is actually turned. I was just thinking about how I've, it's been a long time since I've seen it doing anything but here we go, stuff is going for burning. Whilst we leave Hicks doing all those jobs there, let's come back here quick and see if we can't get some more Bristle Blossom up and ready to go. We can do all of these, but did we do the water? Yeah, you know I did the water. Beautiful. Uh, we did have a little bit of a situation down below where this guy here, this carbon skimmer, kept on pumping uh, polluted water into our line. It was just a little oversight of mine uh, from not realising that it was hooked up like that. We've got to somehow figure out how he's going to get his polluted water out of here. Maybe even dumping it over here, as it this is an area we can pick up uh, polluted water from, and it gets shunted over this way. Maybe then. Okay, now the question is, can we keep our hatches alive with Gristleberry? We'll we'll find out, right? We'll find out. Let's get back to Sharubi, see what's going on over here. We've got some stuff being built. We've got some things being ripped down. I'm going to make a nice little pocket over here for the hydrogen generator, as I say. But also, I've been moving uh, some of the wires around so we can move the gas pump over as well. So I've moved the hydrogen generator down into the ethanol distillery. We'll end up cooling this whole place down together. And we're running a bit of a longer gas line than I really would have liked. But I tried messing around with the idea of putting a little chamber up here. But obviously it's a 3x3. Three three. I would have ended up being quite large. I haven't deconstructed and moved this pipe yet, have I? Okay, that's cool. Uh, next thing we need to try and do, automation wire is all good, is to rip this water sieve down. Let's do that. Let's do that right now. I need to figure out how the water line is going to go around in the background. You know what? I might even put this extra tile down here. Uh, we need to delete these two. Let's deconstruct that tile and deconstruct that tile. And we're just going to wait for these ones to be done. What's going on over on your kill? We run out of food? No, we're building up lots and lots of food. Got a few idle dupes that are sitting around, but I 
think that should probably change when this lot all starts taking over. How are we doing on the actual food, though? No pending deliveries. That's that's not true. There, gris Gristleberry. Why, why didn't you turn on? What's up with that? Gristleberry, Gristleberry. There we go, turn it on. Okay, Ash and Bishop will get on it soon, but some... Oh, it's because it's evening time. I was about to say, for some reason, the uh, the idle people have got things to do. But yeah, they, they've got, like, hygiene to deal with. Okay, most of the major infrastructure is in place. We're going to need to get another liquid reservoir. Oh, that, that, that weird connection thing is not quite what we wanted. Let's rip down those wire, uh, those liquid pipes as well. These, one, these ones here, and then we'll figure out how we're going to connect this all together. Oh no, things just got a little bit too serious. Uh, Dr. Captain Subs has unfortunately made a mess. He worked himself to the absolute bone until we couldn't actually work him any longer. Uh, and unfortunately, the uh, the lavatories got filled up because we hadn't quite got these last few pipes put in place. I should have probably figured out some sort of way of keeping one system running whilst improving the other, but I just didn't work out like that. Okay, my question here is does this flow? I'm particularly worried about this bit. Let, let's see what happens there. Ah, no, no sand. Who's on it? Okay, I had to wait for the morning for a delivery to turn up, but it looks like now everything is working well. We've got a loop set up and this little bridge is adding on to all the packets from the, the sieve here. Hopefully we can build up some sort of backlog, though I'm a little bit worried that actually, no, this is just gonna go around in the circle without backlogging at all. Okay, okay, the bridge is useless now. Because I'm using a little bit of automation to control the water sieve, we don't actually need the bridge anymore. And in fact, it is doing nothing more than causing us a trouble. So let's try one of those. In fact, can we, can we get this done, guys? Okay, so now the flow is that we share the pipe each way. So one packet from this side, one packet from this side. But when this gets close to its being full, uh, the automation, this automation, turns the water sieve back off stopping water being added to the system this should now start building up water in this back one okay uh, as it turns out we are just killing the uh, the germs pretty quickly as well so that's that's also working out pretty good so the scrubbing systems worked and over here I've set up a few more orders to get a small little puffed farm up and running we're probably gonna end up moving the mushroom farm I mean we've got a lot of dead space here probably end up being just in front of the of the puff farms. Uh, there was a small problem kicking off on Taranu. I'd managed, well, I, I had disconnected the water because we were producing too much and all the pipes were filling up, but obviously we weren't producing enough and the oil well shut down. So I've reconnected the water from Yakil uh, and everything seems to be working now. Unfortunately, this did mean that we were missing out on some research kicking down. Uh, as you can see, we started building up the rad bolts again. I was also, whilst we're over here, curious about this little little guy so I busted open one of these petroleum uh, containers here got it picked up by the liquid pump uh, which hopefully will start get, getting flooded again shortly once this oil well spins back up uh, but unfortunately no it, it broke the oil refinery I was kind of hoping it was a little bit like the water sieve if you pump ordinary water into the water sieve it will just pass on through uh, that that's great and I was kind of hoping it would be the same with the uh, with the oil refinery no no, it was not. But anyway, Sharubi, we're going to be getting ourselves this puff farm. Oh, uh, something else I noticed whilst we're out here. Where, where is she? Cal, um, she's full of antihistamines right now. That's because she's allergic to the plants. She's a farmer. I've done the potentially insane thing of asking not just for all this to be swept up, but for all this to be swept up, and this to be swept up, and this down here to be swept up, all into this one spot over here. Uh, just... It felt untidy, you know. <laughs> And because of our results of our little experiment here, we're going to pick up this egg. We're going to pop it down in the storage bin down here. Don't worry, I'm not going to leave it in here to die. We're going to then just uh, drop it on the floor. I was going to destroy the storage bin, but actually thinking about it, we'll just drop it on the floor there. Because uh, we might need this again. You never know. We might need this again. They might decide to drop another one at some point. Okay, we're going to have a crazy time over here on Taranu. This is the oil and space research. Well, it's not space research. It's materials research. We do have space research in the solar 
solo spacefarer module, but we'll talk about that at some point. I've asked randomers to come along and just spill some petrol on top of the base because I want to create a, uh, a little weird system here. One of the problems we've got with charging up our uh, rad bolts is that the radiation is not making it through these tiles very well. As you can see, it's coming through like 10 over here. Uh, that's that's almost exactly what we've got here. Three three rads per second. That's, that's pretty bad. We could probably do a little bit better than that. Three per cycle. Look at this. So what we're going to do is take this tile out here. By taking the tile out underneath, sorry, I had to wait for night time there. And you can see it makes a little seal here. That we got the uh, the vacuum above, some oxygen escaping, but it shouldn't be continuous. This should just be a little layer here. Let's wait for that to disappear and see if any more appears. Okay, so that's now gone. It should give us a beautiful, beautiful seal there. Let's destroy all of this stuff. And now our red bolt generator should be producing at roughly. Let's have a look. Eight, eight per cycle. That still could be better. I think the petroleum is slightly affected. How do we make it a little bit better? I need some visco gel is, uh, is essentially what I need, right? Mm, so it looks like I would have been better off leaving it alone. Okay. Okay, almost all the liquids I've got access to will actually end up giving us a worse uh, pass through than the tile. So the tile was letting 10 through uh, and almost all the liquids will block over 70%. I keep saying almost though, if we can make some naphtha, melt some plastic, naphtha only blocks 60%. 60% of 25 is 15. We we can totally do that. That that's that's an improvement. That's an improvement. The thing is we're going to have to take some plastic somewhere where it melts. Thankfully, I have been making a bunch of plastic tile uh, tiles over here. Uh, you can see they melt 159. Let's have a look down uh, just just down here so 160 okay this is these these are the temperatures i'm looking for let's do this here i'm going to copy this oh uh, it's like no you can't make it you haven't got enough plastic okay having cancelled all of those let's come over to here plastic ladder let's just make one right there thanks uh high, highest priority high highest priority so my one possible problem here is if the plastic melts along the way. I'm hoping not. It's relatively cool up until the point he goes down this ladder over here. This is where the temperature should start to rise. Uh, and as you can see, it is because he's walking through liquids. But that's that's fine. It, it, it managed to make it all the way down. There are 50 kilograms of plastic delivered. And there we go. It's placed. Now, how long do we have to wait for it to warm up? That's the question. Temperature, 45 degrees. Okay take a while isn't it okay let's pour some petroleum on it instead let's see if we can't warm that up okay there we go and hopefully now yes the plastic ladder's temperature is shooting up it's gonna still take a little bit of while and i'm hoping that nothing else is dropping in temperature too much in fact oh, maybe are we gonna get down far enough we'll, we'll find out i mean 160 we, we should get there right oh no 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 stop 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 we don't want any more being added thank you drop a hot rock in the rock is 164 degrees let's see if that helps it uh, stay warm we've got 174 underneath and the petroleum is uh just below the temperature of the rock so yeah that was a, a good good addition to try and keep the temperature high more lava eggs are being made so i've made this automatic dispenser oh, of course they're gonna go around in circles this needs to be on sweep only there we go all right uh i did actually ask for that to be swept though so i don't know why he dropped it so if you're wondering if this is the best way to let radiation through, no. So far in my exploration, the best way to do it, uh, at least that I have access to, is gold tiles. Gold tiles are the best one. Um, th there are better materials. There are definitely better materials. Uh, genetic ooze is one of the best. Solid mercury and radium. If you can make radium tiles, that's only a 25% blockage. Okay, we're going in for the naphtha here. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, naphtha, highest possible, thank you. Well, not quite the highest, highest possible, but I also want to sweep these up. Perhaps these want to be the highest, highest possible. We want to get those swept up before the naphtha arrives. I'm not saying I don't trust them to finish the job, but I've put this on yellow alert, the bottle emptier, to make sure whoever, but this time randoms, goes from one end of the map to the other, gets the job finished and doesn't just drop it off halfway around. Let's see what's in the mini pod. Ooh, no, no, nothing I want. I thought they said decorating then for a second, but no, nothing I want. Okay, here goes all the naphtha that we've got. Let's uh, let's turn that off now, shall we? We've got a little, we've got a little uh, dollop there. That's all we needed, and we are absorbing eleven. That's 
not quite as good as I was hoping for. Have we got some fumes ahead of us? We did have some fumes above us. 12. Okay, that's that's not quite the 15 and we were aiming for, but it's still pretty good. So we're on Shurubi here, and I've been on the lookout for a little while now for someone to run the ranch and the farm. And uh, coming over to the printing pod, if, if it will actually let me have a look at the blueprint here, uh, I think this guy's pretty good. He's got a building. That's just a bit random. Doesn't worry. Tidying and farming, though. These are the tidying just to help tidy up the place. You know, there's a lot going on down there. But the farming is good. He's got a green thumb. More important, he's germ resistant for somewhere that's just like covered covered in slime lungs. So yeah, I think I think we're going to have this guy, uh, Thomas Kane, uh, the guy who first first introduces us to the face huggers. Uh, we're we're going to go with it. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, we're going to need to build him a bedroom somewhere, but I think we should actually build him a bedroom maybe over here somewhere. Or do I just slam it? You know what? We're, we're just for now going to slam him a bed there. I, I do intend to make these guys a better bunk at some point. Not that all of them are going to be staying here forever. It, it has to be said, but a few of them will. I think Burke will, and I'm fairly sure Kane will. Now what we need is for Kane to run around and grab a whole bunch of skills because we need him to be able to run. It's, it's one of the things we're missing. We, we, we need to get there. Here, have a have a improved farming. I think I might just follow him around for a little bit. The base pretty much just runs on its own. Hicks is off like digging stuff. You know, we need some steel before we can do any more. Uh, but before we can do that, actually, before we can get the uh, the steel, I want to work towards a certain piece of technology. Let's see if I can find it here. In fact, I'm in the middle of uh, researching it right now. High velocity transport. It gives us the interplanetary launcher. It's a railgun. It fires packets in bullets at these things, the target beacons. And I think this will be a nice way to start start sharing materials amongst my duplicates. I mean, we could set up a whole uh, transfer system with the with the rockets, but uh, that's, uh, that's a lot of work, right? But to do this, you'll notice that there are four technologies that need to be researched. If we go over to, to we are in fact, fact in Toronto, we've got one, the basic research, two, the advanced research, and three, the material study research. But inside this terminal, we had number four, the orbital micro lab, the science research. But look at this, 71, 74. I mean, all these are all these are melting. Th things have gone wrong here. You know what? I, we're gonna rip everything down. Just just literally everything down. We we can do things better now. We can do things much much better. If uh, for instance, I want to come here and go, hey, click above. We've got a. Uh Oh, we don't have them right now. I was going to say we've got solar panels, but no, we don't have that. Wait a minute. Space power. This is look, look at this battery module, a solar panel, and then a plug for the wall. This this, this is what we want for our rocket. Uh, let's do it now. We're not gonna, we're not going to be able to research the space science until we can get all this done. So we uh, what's got, what's going on with the red bolts? How's the power been holding out? Thirteen. That's pretty nice. None, none in the research lab. But I should imagine that's because he's gone through and done. Oh, no water. Oh, no. No water. Okay. Let's connect these pipes back together. It's, it's a bit weird. Like, so with this pipe broken, basically all the water that comes in through the teleporter comes down and either powers the oil well, lost forever, never comes back. Though we do, like, change the oil into petroleum and burn a bit of it and then that turns into fresh water. And the other one goes into the carbon skimmers, which also get turned into polluted water and then get taken up here to be cleaned, scrubbed, and dropped into here. How How is this many bristle blossoms consuming all that water? Like, all that water. Okay, that, that that's fine, I suppose. Hopefully when this gets built, anybody? anybody? Let's, let's just improve that chance a bit. As I was saying, hopefully when this gets built, we should... Uh, no? 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 As this gets built, thank you, we should see water going that way. No, there's no water going that way. Okay, so the problem with this is the direction of flow. It's going to want to split water either way this way. Um, let's put down a bridge instead. Okay, with it set like this, we're just basically never... Oh, I caught these two with the, with the hurry up and build order. Uh, with this set like this, we should basically never be f using this water for these guys down here, the oil production, and only using it to top up this. I, I kind of would like this to be done a little bit different. Okay, hopefully with it set up like this, with the liquid pipe going over, this will always draw out for the water first from here. Uh, we had a little bit of a problem a little while ago where all the polluted water was backing up into this area and things weren't able to clean. So I've got to make sure it's leaving. 
I have been fighting to keep these batteries full over here. Obviously, every night the solar panels die, and so this lot has to uh, keep up with it. You can notice that I have rearranged this area here. I've put the coal generators down low around a storage bin that contains a whole bunch of coal. I have made Honda a mechanical en a mechatronics engineer so he could build this auto sweeper, which makes sure that these guys are topped up without any interference from my duplicates. We have the two power circuits on the outside here, making sure that the atmospheric dock suits and stuff like that can run ah good a bit of a re uh, wire rearrangement is up and ready for doing beautiful and uh, the last thing I've did of course is put a little bit of automation coming from this battery here this battery is hooked up to the main power spline the heavy watt wire uh, so this tells me how much power is just in the system if you will uh, when that tops out it it sends a, a no signal through the system and then when it goes it sends a green or when it drops below a 70 percent threshold it sends a green signal to start everything back up again turns out we were wasting a lot of power so with that all in mind we've got a fairly serious power system on the go the next thing that was holding me back was the amount of rubbish around the Red Bolt generator over here. You can see that we've, we've got, we put these oxygen masks out here. Let's make use of them. It is now almost a complete vacuum here. Just a little bit of carbon dioxide being lost. Uh, but we still have a little bit of problems with the with the radiation up here. It's, it's not quite as good as it could be. Let's deconstruct this as well. I really want to deconstruct that tile over there if we can. I'm going to... Oh no, not deconstruct that. Get, get a little deconstruct heavy over here. I wanted to build a ladder just over here okay brilliant 25 24 rads is it because of the oxygen here i don't know i really don't know we are slightly getting better rates though now i oh, know it's still 22 this is this is not one hopefully we'll get a couple of them out of here before it overheats we, we, we can go up quite a ways uh, to 1400 before it gets too bad uh, i've put a few slow build orders in the background so that when it, it gets a little bit intense we can just seal it all back up again i kind of wish i'd left the bottle empty actually that was the only thing i didn't want to destroy less than one cycle and 100 degrees later 27 rad bolts great uh, where the duplicates have going, been going back and forth and making some gases go past the rad bolt generator the temperature has been going down that's pretty weird uh the uh number of rad bolts per cycle stayed stayed pretty constant though maybe maybe this is just something we could deal with just a, a small loss of gas every now and then Okay, if this becomes a problem, and with the way the temperature's up and down, I don't think it will, I could just go in here and turn the naphtha on and hit the alarm, and this should then all be made safe, hopefully. <laughs> In the name of trying to speed things up, I made a little bit of naphtha down here, a little bit more naphtha, and spread a whole bunch down across this way. If we have a look at the radiation overlay, you can see 25 rads per cycle. I don't know why it's down to 24 here, but we'll take this 25. Is it 24 um, on the corner? No, no, literally, it's not even as if it's being crowded out here. I, I don't know. How about down here? No, 25 as well. I, I don't know why it drops down over there. So what I'm going to do instead is to turn this one in. I've dropped a bunch of naphtha on the floor in the I uh, hope that it will take the heat away. We'll, we'll find out. It's 90 degrees, 87 over here. This is exchanging the heat with all of this gas. Okay, yeah, this, this should be fine. 60 degrees, wow. So maybe if we do that and then also the naphtha down here. Of course, where, where I was making the naphtha was very warm. So maybe that's why it's so hot up here now. But may maybe, maybe actually we'll rip this one down and pop it over here as well. I made this one out of obsidian because if we uh, decide that we want to make a little oven, we, we can use this, yes. <laughs> but the main concern that I have is overnight, this takes, oh, wrong one, 40, uh, 480 watts. That's more than one of these give out, if I remember correctly. Six, oh, actually, no, no, we, we should be okay. We should, it's a bit a big word should be okay over on shirubi i wanted to have four of these uh we're we're missing a bit of a space here to do that let's let's dig these out i'd like people to go across and do it as quick as possible so i can show you so dr captain subs doing the the groundwork there hicks coming along to finish this maybe yeah here we go all right L little bit of a pond here just emptying out down below why i'm keeping all the water down below if you didn't notice was so that it could off gas and uh let let all its uh beautiful beautiful wonderful 
illegal polluted oxygen up here for the puffs to be eating. When everything has been uh, prepared well, I'm going to put another. I'm going to put another little block here just to make sure there is at least a minimum of one tile of water in here, uh, and then pick up any excess polluted water and ship it off. We're also planning to drop all the uh, polluted water we make into here so it can drop down, make its way through. We haven't quite finished this. Let's uh, let's dig that out. There's a few that we can't because it's neutronium. Fair enough. But it should hit all these uh, airflow tiles on the way, off gas a bit more, try and get as much actual polluted gas out here as possible because when these guys start turning over and the puffs start producing more little pufflets, uh, we're, we're probably going to be eating through the polluted oxygen pretty quickly. Okay, is this taking the full... Is getting the full 25 despite being in the naphtha? Is it getting hot? 60 degrees, 60.1? It might be. It might be. There's not much gas in here. That, that could be the reason why. Let's uh, try and get some more naphtha dropped off up here so that we can make a seal. Okay, everything appears to be sharing its heat quite nicely. The gas is in here dropped down to about 30. Uh, let's let's open this door. Let's see if we can make that happen. Oh, it's night time though. Will anybody come along and do it? Yeah, thank, thanks very much, Hara. But yes, opening the door seems to have pulled all the power out. More importantly, we seem to be holding up with the power. Sorry, holding the heat back. Uh, opening the door has allowed the heat to be shared through the naphtha into the gas. But as I say, more importantly, the power is holding up throughout the night. Let's come down and see how we're doing. We've got the uh, petroleum stocks 775 yeah this is this is going incredibly well look at this smart battery it's mostly full most of the time yes th this is this is a very good system yeah are we doing this again and 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 i think it's expandable i think we can just carry on going out this way putting down drywall and tile and then dropping more naphtha down we have to come up with a better way of making naphtha than just coming down here and dropping it on the side oh randomers has just managed to get himself a whole bunch of science here this means that we actually have access to the solar panels now space power it's what we've been heading towards i'm gonna go ahead and put the high velocity transport uh research back down but we're gonna come over to this solo spacefarer module i want to put another thing underneath it if we come down here now we should be able to see look at that solar panel module beautiful gonna take us a little bit of steel that's fine and i should be able to put a battery module down hopefully and we're going to use copper ore for that all right great okay two buildings need to be done there i'm going to view the interior i believe everything in here is a little bit warm so we're going to try and pick it all up the carbon dioxide also very hot i'm not sure if we can deal with this in any way we're going to be using some pretty extreme methods to try and get the temperature down inside the rocket. I'm hoping we can use some ice to bring it down low enough. We're going to make whatever ice we can in here. It's probably going to get quite toasty. Maybe more toasty than I would have liked. But once this is done, we're going to put an ice temperature shift plate in here, which should hopefully bring the temperature down quite a lot. Okay, small change of plan, having a look at what's going on here. This ice maker produces about 30 kilograms of ice. If we go into the uh, the interior here and I go, hey, can I have a utility and temperature shift plate and come down to the ice down the end here? You see, I need 800 kilograms of ice. Uh, that that That's going to take a little while to do. So let's instead try and get all of this mopped up and then rip the nodule down and see if we can't fix it that way. In fact, shall we just remove this module see what happens okay it all just got emptied out everything thrown on the floor here that's fine i can live i can live with that it could have been a lot worse could have been a lot better uh then on top of this we're just gonna throw another solo spacefarer module i don't know whether we wanted to build a bigger one but i, I think we're just gonna do this for a research rocket well honestly i haven't got a clue where this water came from but we've got some research station on the basic we've got an advanced research station we've got the material study and finally and finally as we've been trying to do all day we finally have the orbital micro lab in there but this box that should contain a whole a bunch of plastic is empty why is my plastic box empty on the rock that makes us a whole bunch of plastic uh we come to where has all this water come from I'm, I'm looking at here right i'm looking here and i'm like f6 i don't get it where's it come like seriously where where where's it actually come from has this expanded somehow and then it's flowed over i don't know it's come down here i kind of get that i dug this area out and thus salt water came flowing but but yeah i don't know anyway that's kind of helpful because if we come over here we got no water we've got no water in the pipes at all and if we come back up no water coming over from Tirano. also look at that hicks having some fooding issues we'll deal with that in a second because over here this guy this guy's fine he's cooking over five 
Let's call it five kilograms per second. That's cool. But this guy down here, this is the one that makes us seven kilograms per second. It's gone dormant. It's dormant for 34 days. So with that, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you guys next time where we have got a big, big water issue to sort out. People are starving. There are just problems everywhere. So I'll see you then when we're going to do that. Bye.